Okay, so I just started uh, recording. So I will uh, share the link of the playlist, YouTube playlist for our videos on Autoclass. And, uh, and each week after every uh, class, every day, on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I will be adding the, that day's uh, videos on, on that same playlist. Um, all right, so um, the YouTube has certain benefits like uh, automated closed captioning, uh, if you require that, or uh, you can watch it faster if you want. All right, uh, so I think it will make the courses less boring uh, if you speed it up. All right, so. Uh, all right, so I started the recording. I will share the YouTube list with you. So uh, the this is the Autoclass web page. We have an all, all section. Oh, by the way, uh, I just uh, remember the when I heard the, uh, some sound. Uh, you can mute your microphones if you don't have any questions. Uh, I I'll see whether I can mute all but feel free to unmute yourself and speak up if you have questions so you can ask your questions uh, in our synchronous lectures you can ask your questions by uh, speaking up or you can also use the chat box which you see on the right here on my screen i will be checking the chat box regularly to uh, look for questions and i will answer as soon as i uh, i can all right so yeah, feel free to ask uh, questions anytime. Feel free to interrupt me. Type type in the chat box for questions for course uh, for any topic related material or out of topic material. Uh, so just feel free. So I just want this course to be as interactive as possible. Um, and uh, I uh, posted the course textbook. I put the course textbook on Autoclass uh, under all sections and the first week material. Uh, so the course te textbook that we're going to be using is this one. I have a printed uh, copy of that PDF. Uh, I can just click on this link or I have it also here. So this is our course textbook by Michael Barron and probability and statistics for computer scientists. So what makes this computer for computer scientists is, I mean, I think uh, there's also the, most of the examples are uh, computer -rela computer related stuff like network reliability or uh, ha computer hardware uh, defects in computer hardware. So examples are built around this. And but in terms of the course, what I think differentiates this course from other probability and statistics course. Uh, is the simulation of random variables or computing of probabilities by writing some simulation code. So uh, that's what I didn't see in other probability and statistics courses that, for, that I get from Eras Erasmus students. For example, they go to Erasmus and they take a probability or, and statistics course from a different department there. And uh, they teach probability and statistics. Most of the... Uh, Subjects are really classical. Uh, I mean, the, the theory of probability, uh, everything is really straightforward. This random variables, discrete distributions, continuous distributions, and in terms of statistics, hypothesis testing, um, stochastic processes, all these things uh, are really fairly straightforward uh, as expected from a second year course. Uh, but what is different, and I like the, these uh, chapters a lot, is uh, the com chapter five of this book, Computer Simulations and Monte Carlo Methods. So Monte Carlo Methods help great deal when it's really difficult to uh, have a mathematical closed form formula for a probability. And this is uh, uh, the scientists in 1940s and 19 at the end of 1930s that when they were working on the atomic bomb, uh, in the Manhattan Project, they had same problems. For example, the uranium decay, trying to have a mathematical uh, stochastic model for uh, atomic particles and their interactions in a very complex manner was really difficult. 
Uh, but then they came up with this uh, idea of uh, why don't we uh, simulate individual entities and see if we if we if we have enough computational power if we can perform enough number of simulations. They didn't have that computational power back then, but if they uh, perform the experiment uh, by s simulating these uh, small entities individually and see what happens, just observe what happens in these simulations, in the long run, it's possible to compute uh, probabilities that are very close to the real probability. So I think that's really exciting uh, be, to be able to write some program and to compute something. And the simplest example of that chapter five is, for example, computing the number pi, okay, 3.1415 something. So how do you compute number pi by just, uh, by just using a, with a computer simulation by writing some program? Um, it's uh, actually, I, I will just uh, give you the idea now. So I don't want it just uh, to be a teaser. Uh, but you could do that by writing a program like this. For example, you can have a unit square uh, with area one, okay? And you can fit in a circle inside this with a radius of 0 0.5, okay? Now, we know the area of the square is one, right? What is the area of the, uh, the circle, uh, the, the, the disk? Uh, 0.5, right? This is 0.5. We know that it's pi uh, 0.5 uh, square. In other words, it's pi over 4, right? This is 1 over 2, 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 4. So the area of the disk is pi over 4. The area of the unit uh, square is 1. Now, let's perform a simulation like this. Let's generate uniform random variables. So that's that's one of the key items that we will have in our hand when we perform simulation, a random number generator. So actually back in 1940s, that's one of the most difficult parts that the, one of the difficulties uh, the scientists faced. How do you generate numbers that are that random? Okay, I mean, you can toss a coin. Uh, to get random numbers, uh, I mean, toss, tossing a coin will give you a bit every time, a random bit. So uh, getting random bits, for example, you can, when you cost a coin eight times, uh, it will give you eight bits. So you can generate numbers between 0 and 255 uh, or 1 and 256 if you toss the coin eight times, right? It will really truly be random, I mean, if the coin is unbiased. So, uh, but generating millions of random numbers this way by just tossing coins is really uh, time consuming. So that was one of the problems they face. And the, these days we have um, pseudo random number generators that a sequence of random numbers that look random. They may not be, but we can use those random number generators to get ourselves a uniform random number uh, between uh, 0 and 1. For example, if these are, you can consider the left corner of this square, uh, we can put this in an xy coordinate system like this. Okay, so this is the x coordinate, this is the y coordinate. And I can generate two uniform. Uh, I'm actually recording my screen at the moment. Uh, so uh, I'm not stre streaming. Uh, I should. You should be you should be seeing your uh, see my screen, right? I uh, I'm sh I shared my screen on WebEx, so you should be able to uh, see my screen. Okay, uh, and I'm also recording my screen locally in a high quality manner. I'm not streaming online, uh, uh, but I'm recording it on my computer, so it will be this recording will be available later on YouTube and I'm going to send you the link of the playlist. Oh, okay. Uh, probably if it may be related to Firefox, you're right. Maybe you should uh, run uh, the WebEx from the application. Yeah, try to install the WebEx application. Uh, by the way, you can join and leave the meeting anytime you want. You don't need to ask permission. If you're late for a class, it's okay to join later. All right, 
don't just hesitate uh, if you just, uh, for example, miss the first 10, 15 minutes of the class. It's okay. You can join these meetings anytime and you can leave these meetings anytime. I'm not going to take any attendance. So you're free to join and leave these online synchronous sessions. All right. So, yeah, I was uh, talking about this coordinate uh, axis between now the uh, points. If I generate random coordinates uh, between 0 and 1, for example, if I generate a uniform random number, which is 0 0.3, and uh, then the other random number, maybe 0 0.43, this will be a point uh, in this uh, space that is occupied by the square. So, in other words, I will be generating points, a lot of points on the uh, on this unit square and you know what happens here you, you actually see how we can use this simulation to compute pi right what all we need to do is do generate a lot of random points so uh, for example uh, if we knew uh, if our, we don't know what pi is our goal is to under to find pi right uh, but uh, if we knew this, if somebody gave you the area of the disk directly, okay, let's call it AD. And if uh, we already know the area of this unit square is uh, 1, let's call it area of the square. Uh, the ratio of the disk to the square is basically uh, this pi over 4 divided by 1, right? Now, with these simulations, uh, we'll be able to... Uh, approximate the area of the disk by just generating enough number of points. And this ratio simply is the number of, uh, I mean, this will be approximated by the number of total, uh, number of points generated, number of points uh, you generate randomly, generated, and the number of points that are inside the disk number of points that are inside the disk. So is it difficult to find whether a point that you generate is inside the disk or not? No, not that difficult at all. All you need to do is find the distance of your generated point, find the distance of this from the uh, point uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. It's not that difficult. You find the Euclidean distance uh, between these, your random point and the center of your disk. If it's less than or equal to 0 0.5, if that distance, it means that the point is inside the disk. So we're just going to make this check and count the number of points that are inside. And if you do that, I mean, if you just write this simple program, you'll see that if you generate a lot of points, you will approximate the number pi. But the bad thing about this is you have to generate a lot of points like maybe um, if you want to uh, this is not a very good way to uh, get increase the precision of pi that you're computing because you'll see that if, if you will not be able to get to even six decimal digits in order to get the six digits of their decimal point uh, you have to generate a lot of points. It may not be the most efficient, but this is just an idea of how writing programs can be used to compute uh, probabilities. Here, the probability of having, we're, we're actually uh, trying to compute the probability here. This ratio is the probability of a random point to be inside a circle. And this probability we associated with the ratio of areas directly. Uh, which then you can compute to uh, find pi. So this was just a small example. We'll co talk about these things. And one of your assignments is going to be about this. For example, uh, let me show you how some probabilities can be dif uh, difficult to compute. If we go back to uh, two years ago, so I think it was two years ago, let me see or let me just directly go find from a home page so i keep a list of websites uh, i think this this one the assignment is here yeah so this was the assignment from three years or two years ago so if you if you look at this 
there are lots of random variables. So, so if you look if you look at the problem, it's m most of the things you don't know right now. Uh, so this is really like a teaser uh, for what you'll be seeing. But we'll be seeing, uh, I mean, if you look at the story of the assignment, so there's a small village, there are several, several vehicles uh, that use a bridge to cross a river, Every day, several motorcycles, automobiles, and trucks use this bridge. So there are three types of vehicles. And the number of motorcycles that pass over the bridge on a day is, a, is some random variable with expected value of 40. So with the expected value of 40, different motorcycles pass each day. It may be 30, it may be 20, it may be 60, 55. It's a random variable. And we are going to see that this distribution, Poisson, distribution is going to have a certain shape and certain, uh, for example, we'll be able to compute what is the probability that more than 30 motorcycles pass over this bridge every day. So we, these probabilities will be easy to compute by using simple mathematics when we discuss the, these uh, random variables. And so in other words, if you look at the first three statements, they are about the number of different types of vehicles that pass over the bridge every day. And this is not something constant. This is uh, some random variable. And this is not a, for example, a uniform random variable between 30 and 50. We really want to simulate some real event. So if you, if you don't know statistics, for example, if you want to have uh, these statements implemented in a game, in a computer game, just to have some uh, variation randomness in a computer game. If you don't know statistics, the first thing you will do is, oh, generate a random number between 30 and 50. Uh, that's, let's use that one as the number of vehicles that pass. And that's, that will be a uniform distribution, which may not be really realistic actually in these cases. So knowing these different distributions will really help you on their simulate better more realistic situations. So the following three statements are about the weights of the vehicles that pass over the bridge. For example, if it's a motorcycle, uh, it's, again, it's a different distribution. The, we'll, we'll see all these distributions, what they mean, in the, and in the third, fourth week, we'll see uh, what, what they are. Uh, it's a gamma distributed random variable in kilograms with two parameters, 16, and 0 0.15 and these are not the expected values so this distribution has two parameters to define its shape and by actually uh, using these two uh, we'll be able to find the expected value of the expected weight of a motorcycle uh, but uh, just again for this question uh, treat it as some random variable now here is a the part A, the question, what you will be able to do by writing programs after what you learn in this course. So conduct a Monte Carlo study, just like the scientists did in back, back in 1940s to predict when the uranium is going to deplete or is going to decay a certain amount, 20%. So when they were uh, doing their studies. Now, we are going to conduct a Monte Carlo study to estimate the probability that the total weight of all the vehicles that pass over the bridge in a day is more than 220 tons. So if somebody asks you this probability, what is the probability that in a day more than 22 tons of total vehicle uh, pass over the bridge? So these are all lots of small probabilities. Uh, there's the number of motorcycles, the weight of the motorcycle may be different. So computing this probability uh, in a close form mathematical formula may be very difficult. Uh, this, it, may, it is very difficult. But what we will do is we'll be able to write a program and compute this ask probability. With this, look at this. This is a really nice statement with probability 0.99. So this is like our confidence. With 99% confidence, we should compute the actual probability within 0.02 deviation. So nothing in probability and statistics is certain. After we conduct these simulations, we will never be certain about, okay, the probability that it's over 22, 222 tons is 0.25. We will never be certain about this. When we, even, even when we present our resulting probability, 
it since it's a simulation every time you run your simulation you're generating random numbers you're going to write a program that is not deterministic every time you run your program it will give you a different number sometimes it's going to be 0.25 sometimes it's going to be 0.26 maybe 0.24 but because because of the random numbers that you generate during your running your program this will be a different entity so but look at this the beauty in this statement it says that with really high probability with high confidence the whatever your program outputs will be within 0 0.02 of the uh, uh, actual result and this such a statement is possible because these large numbers large simulations they approximate normal distribution we are going to see something called central limit theorem and we will be actually making use of that to make this claim that when you run your simulation a lot of times uh, and uh, you'll see that it's always giving a different answer but if you just plot the histogram of those different answer you're going to see that it has a certain shape and it has a certain standard deviation and by using that you will be able to see that oh, okay whatever i generate i cannot be very far away from the actual value so this is what we are going to do so and this is also really in interesting in order to be within this confidence within this limit how many uh, simulations should i run to simulate a single day uh, so it will be like 14,000, maybe 90,000, and uh, we'll be able to see techniques to do that. But at the end, it will just be a program, and uh, we will be able to uh, compute these things. So this is uh, chapter five, and it's in week six. Week, week six. So uh, not that uh, towards the it's in the first part of the course. So. Uh, let's quickly go over the important syllabus related material of the course so all three sections will be uh, synchronous as well uh, we'll you'll have the same midterm uh, there will be a single midterm single final exam and there will be four assignments one of them we plan to be this programming assignment uh, similar to what we have i just described uh, now and three of them are going to be written assignments, which will be very similar to exercises at the end of the chapters in the book. All right, so three written assignments, one programming assignment, four assignments in total. Uh, so this is actually, let me refresh this. I just updated. Oh, this is the old course page. <laughs> so uh, two years ago, it was the assignments were 5% uh, each, and it was a total of your 20% of your grade. Now, this uh, semester, we changed this. Assignments have more. Uh, we, we reduced the percentage of midterm and final exam to 30% each, so uh, a total of 20% reduction in midterm and final exams. And we gave each assignment 8% each. Let me just quickly go over uh, this year's website yeah it's here so we'll let me zoom in all right so for assignments eight percent each will comprise 32 percent of your grade and you will have you know uh, these quizzes the main purpose of these quizzes is not to increase your workload this is i i repeat it's not to increase your workload the quizzes will give you one day to work on a very simple single problem. That's what the quiz will be. It's not going to be in class synchronously. Every, uh, we plan to do this every Thursday at 6 p.m. The quiz will be uh, posted on Oticlus and you will have a day until Friday 6 p.m. to solve this simple single question, which is going to be an very, a question uh, very similar to an exercise in the textbook and the main purpose of this is for you to keep uh, up with the course on a weekly basis okay because we understand one of the uh, difficulties in this online learning when you're away is different priorities uh, may uh, make your uh, may make you not follow courses most of the time the students watch the course videos only just before the midterm exam or the final exam uh, and uh, so and it's very important for you to uh, 
keep up with the course on a weekly basis. This will also reduce your overall workload, actually. Uh, if you, you will not need to study a lot before the midterm or final exams. You will just uh, one hour or maybe half an hour going over the material will be sufficient uh, to study for the midterm and final exams if you regularly keep up with the course material. And that's uh, the quizzes. Uh, the main purpose of them is to help you in uh, maintaining this regular uh, studies, studying for the course. Okay. And Again, some, some, it's in some weeks you may have other assignments that uh, may increase your workload. And what we will do is we will just consider that just drop your four worst grades in the quizzes. Okay, um, so we're just going to uh, count the best eight out of 12. I think that we'll start the quizzes starting from uh, next week. Uh, your first quiz is going to come uh, not this Thursday, but the following Thursday. Uh, and it will be an exercise from chapter two. We'll uh, finish chapter two this uh, week. And it will be an exercise in chapter, uh, similar to an exercise in chapter two. Okay, so we, we really wanted to be as flexible as possible. And again, the main purpose is just to solve a single exercise per week, at least uh, from uh, the course, uh, fr from the course material. And the midterm and final exams uh, are going to be 30% each, and they should add up to, yeah, 40% and 60%. They add up to 100% like this. Uh, the course is not a difficult course as long as you uh, keep up with this course material. It's the, I like teaching the course. I like learning uh, the course material uh, the first time I taught it. I Every year I forget some of the material, and it's a good uh, opportunity for me to get back to uh, the course material and relearn some of the stuff. The textbook is a really nice written textbook with lots of examples, lots of exercises. It's not complicated at all. Uh, starting with uh, the chapter one uh, is just an intro overview. Uh, it's just uh, talking about why we study probability uncertainty of uh, events in general uh, so it's just an introductory chapter to the entire book so we're not going to cover it in class uh, but uh, we'll start with chapter two with probability so the first the, the course is composed of two main parts probability and statistics uh, probability is uh, uh, the uh, the theory uh, you'll see that in probability we are going to discuss the axioms of probability rules of probability things like conditional probability independence of uh, variables discrete random variables and their distributions continuous distributions we are going to talk about these what what is discrete what does discrete mean what does continuous mean and we are going to uh, talk about uh, Monte Carlo simulations that I uh, just mentioned. Uh, these are all on the first part of probability and random variables. Stochastic processes, we are going to leave this to the end of the semester. After chapter five, we are going to jump to chapter eight and talk about statistics. Uh, what is statistics? It's just, it's basically, uh, we already have some data. Uh, you don't have probabilities, but you have some collected data and computing things, some descriptive statistics about this data, the mean, median, different quantiles, quartiles, different visualization tools to help you to understand the distribution in general. So statistics is basically a data-oriented uh, look at uncertainty. Uh, on the other hand, probability is more mathematics oriented, looking at different things. Okay, so it's it's built on some uh, algebra, which is uh, the, the the rules of axioms of probability. And we are going to start our examples uh, by making analogies to set theory. So it's going to be very uh, so set theory, combinatorics, all these things uh, will be in the first probability part and in the statistics part as i said it's more data science or data oriented we'll be talking about these things we'll also statistical inference uh, estimating certain parameters from collected data we'll talk about hypothesis testing uh, 
and different statistical tests, whether, for example, if you collect the data, uh, you'll ask questions, what is the uh, probability or does this data come from a normal distribution or does it come from an exponential distribution? We'll ask questions like this. Uh, we'll talk about a linear regression uh, here. In, in these chapter 10 and 11, you're just going to cover the first easy introductory sections. For example, we are going to talk about chi-square tests, uh, which, as I said, is very, and it's a very nice test to ask things like this. What is the, uh, for example, I have collected data. Does this data come from normal distribution? Or, for example, you have a pair of dice. Uh, are, are these pair of dice fair? They are they fair dice, okay? Or are they biased? Or you may have a coin. Is this coin a fair coin? Asking these questions, what does it mean? Uh, in order to do that, for example, is this coin a fair coin? You need to collect data and see how that data fits in uh, this uh, binomial distribution that we have or or another discrete distribution in the, in the case of uh, dice. Uh, we'll talk about least square estimation uh, in chapter 11. We're not going to cover chapter 11.2 on onwards. So uh, in, in these last chapters, we'll just, uh, just touch up on the single sections to just give you a flavor of what regression means, what inference means. And after that, we're going to come to stochastic processes uh, and just talk about the Markov processes and Markov chains. Uh, we are going to cover chapter six. Most of the time, although we had chapter seven initially included in our initial syllabus and the catalog description, most of the time we don't have time for chapter seven and we skip that chapter seven entirely. It may be the same case here this semester, uh, as experience showed in the last three times I taught this course. All right, and, uh, and stochastic processes are random uh, processes that change over time. So uh, knowing these also is going to be, uh, knowing some techniques here is going to help a lot in later in uh, different uh, courses uh, in fourth year or maybe if you're going to go forward in your graduate studies uh, these the subjects that we uh, cover here are definitely going to be helpful so these uh, all the uh, all these material is really important if you're going to study data science or bioinformatics or uh, as computer sciences moving over more applications uh, oriented, uh, I mean, some of parts of the computer science like bioinformatics or data mining is really uh, the motivating thing is the data uh, that is collected elsewhere in other domains by other disciplines. And understanding this data, making inferences on this data, you really have to have, uh, the, so this is like the, in the first year you have, you have seen calculus, uh, some basic uh, science courses and here this course is really important it, it lays the important foundation for courses such as image processing computer vision deep learning or uh, artificial intelligence bioinformatics and these other courses okay so uh, that's how you maybe you can motivate yourself uh, in this course and the good thing is that uh, our department is teaching this course in the last uh, couple of years, uh, and we are giving examples related to our discipline, and I hope you'll uh, like the course uh, too, okay? So, uh, in terms of course conduct, uh, again, if I go over the material here, uh, I will be conducting my synchronous lectures always on the same link on Cisco WebEx, okay? Uh, so, Feel, again, you feel free to join anytime. If you're late for the course, you can come in late. It doesn't matter. You can leave early again. It doesn't matter for me. You'll be able to watch the recorded videos on YouTube later if you miss a course. Uh, here are the course objectives from the catalog description. Um, math 120 is a prerequisite. Uh, so you, you need to have some mathematics calculus background. 
in order to follow the material in this course. But as I said, the textbook is really nice. Uh, it has exercises at the end of each chapter, and it also contains lots of examples within the chapter with uh, solutions. Uh, for example, if I go here, look at this. Uh, these are simple examples, but if you go to uh, combinatorics part, for example, page 20, let me go down here. Yeah, there are lots of examples. There are uh, their answers rules of probability when we come to combinatorics with more numerical examples. Yeah, here. Yeah, example 2.23 or 2.24. Uh, it's uh, which the, the name of the example is intriguing. Paradox. So what is a paradox? So some uh, classical uh, probability and statistics problems. Okay. Uh, so and it's also connecting different exercises to each other when we have a complete solution for this example and some somewhere else uh, it has a link to that so it's the examples the material is really nicely presented in the book so i suggest uh, you uh, follow the uh, you reading the book will be um, if you just have the book as your only material you will ace the course okay you will be very successful you don't need anything else other than the book but we also have some reference material if you, in case you're interested. There is also uh, another book. Uh, we didn't list it here, I think. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to put that old book also here. Let me see. Yeah, Foresight's book. Uh, so it was freely available. So David Forsythe, he's a really well-known guy in computer vision. He also, so he's a computer scientist. He also has a book which was freely available on his website. I think the draft is available. You can also use this book as a, I will, I will put a link to this book on Oticlus, David Forsythe's book. Yeah, you can actually check here, Forsythe. Statistics. It's actually published. Uh, so David Forsythe is published by Springer now. Uh, if you go to his page, uh, the solution the, of the exercises that are located and at the end of chapters are not available. I I don't have them, uh, but you may maybe find them. Uh, in uh, on the web okay uh, if you search for it or you can uh, discuss among your friends to for these solutions but uh, as far as i know i don't there is no solutions for the end of chapter exercises so this is another book that you can use as a reference by david Forsyth, probability and statistics for computer science so it's also uh, another textbook that is related to this course. All right, I talked about the grading policy. Um, I also plan to have a regular office hour, uh, probably after this class on Tuesdays. So Tuesdays at 1040, I uh, plan to have a regular office hour again online on WebEx, but I'm by default, I'm not going to have the, I, I'm going to have it reserved in my calendar, but by default, I'm not going to conduct it. Only if one of the students, at least one student sends an email to me and ask, I'm go, I need to ask you some questions in your office hour this week, I will conduct that office hour. And your other students are also welcome to join to that regular office hour every Tuesdays at 1040, one hour. But you're also, if, if, if you have some class after this today, that's also okay. You can send an email to me to schedule for an appo appointment on a face-to-face -face meeting and feel free to send an email to me for your questions. I prefer email co communication um, and I try to get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, if you have any questions about the course, about the exercises when you're solving, you have some difficulty, you're not sure about the solutions to those exercises, feel free to send me an email or you may also uh, use the 
call a news group to ask the question to your friends. You're welcome to do that. So let's courses undergrads. So we should have a core designated new uh, category for our course. Yes. So this is the uh, this semester only Svelo uh, posted. So so my last submission here was last year. The weighted overall grades in July 2020. So, but you can use this call forum to ask your questions. Uh, feel free to send me an email. And if you want to have a face-to-face -face meeting about some of the topics, feel free to again send me an email to schedule an appointment other than this regular office hour. But as I said, I'm not going to conduct the regular office hour by default. By default, I will not have it. But if somebody requests to uh, have me in my office hour, I will conduct the regular office hour on Tuesdays uh, here, okay, uh, at 10.40. All right, uh, that's the office there. You can always send an email to me and uh, we'll be using uh, Oticlus regularly. Uh, the lecture slides for the entire semester are already here. Okay, I will be using the same lecture slides this semester. So you can go ahead and download them, take a look at them. So this is chapter eight, we, uh, statistics. The, I prepared these lecture slides not uh, as uh, a material for you to study, but as my cue notes that I was giving the lecture uh, face to face. So I really use the textbook as the main material. Okay, so uh, instead of going over the slides is really like a reminder uh, cue cards, reminder cards that you will be using when you're studying for the midterm exam. It will say just, okay, there's this topic, there is this topic. But if you want to learn the subject, you really need to read the book. The book is very readable. It's easy to read and uh, with lots of examples, exercises. Uh, so I suggest you read the book to study for the subject and use these lecture slides as reminder cards uh, about the topics, which, which parts that are important that you should not miss and things like that. All right, all the lecture slides are already available here. I'm not going to put them again in Oticlus. Okay, the lecture slides, I'm not going to put them on Oticlus. The assignments, quizzes your grades and these things are going to be on Oticlus. And any other thing I forgot in the syllabus. So there is a link to the syllabus or section one on the course homepage. Um, yeah, we have three assistants. Uh, this is an, I think an outdated syllabus. Yeah, yeah, I, I reloaded it. So. Tubarak, Mehmet, and Mustafa are going to be our course assistants. They will be uh, responsible from the assignments. They will design the assignments, and uh, after discussing it with us, the instructors, they will post the announcements on Oticlass. They will grade your assignments. Uh, they will uh, also be responsible from the quizzes uh, each week. We will tell them uh, which topic to ask from which chapter to ask from every week and they will prepare a single question quiz every week again i repeat if you if in case you missed the quizzes will uh, have a total of one day to work on so every thursday we plan to give the quizzes on thursdays at 6 p.m and you will have a chance to submit your answers by friday 6 p.m in the evening all right and four of your worst uh, quiz grades will be dropped out and the best eight will count towards your 8% or total of your quiz grades. Uh, the weekly uh, tentative weekly outline is also here, which is uh, parallel to what I have here on my, uh, on my course website. Uh, the textbook, supplementary uh, material, and Michael Baron also has a course website. Uh, you can also check uh, his course website for additional exercises, maybe for, for additional learning material. Oh, this is also, yeah, 
uh, this is the course grading part is uh, updated all right so that's it from me for today i'm going to start talking about probability even certain terminology that we will be using when we discuss probability what are events what are outcomes uh, rules of axioms of probability how we compute probabilities uh, we're not going to cover combinatorics chap section 2.3 in this course uh, but it will we will give you as a reading exercise but uh, another, another important thing uh, i will get back to your question uh, soon one important thing is that in the exams uh, you will we will give you uh, one page of formulas so you will not need to memorize any combinatoric formula any distribution formula what is the expected value of this distribution what is the standard deviation of this distribution there are lots of formulas in the book don't let those formulas intimidate you uh, we'll just just learn how to use them uh, we will at the both in the midterm and the final uh, final exam the first page of the midterm and final exam will contain all these formulas that you'll need to solve those questions okay there will be no uh no you don't need you to mem memorize those formulas so also for combinatorics for example all those formulas in this section will also be given to you in the midterm and final exam so the, uh, yeah thank you for asking this question Mahab. uh programming where is it going to be done is it it's going to be it's going to be matlab uh, we will not be using Python because MATLAB contains lots of uh, these distributions or random number generations in different distributions readily available. You don't need to install MATLAB on your computer. We will be using Octave Online, the free version of MATLAB. Uh, this is octave-online.net. Okay, let me paste this in the chat box. So we will expect you to have uh, the solutions in Octave Online. I will actually share one of the, I, I did this last year, uh, the solutions of the assignment, the coding that you're going to be doing. Let me just get to this teaching. Where is it? Yeah, right here. Oh, it's actually here. So, so let me just show you uh, one of the codes that we had written. Okay, it's only 40 lines of code. Okay, so this is the solution uh, for the uh, problem that I asked in the first year I taught this. So this is about a fisherman catching some fish every uh, hour. So the number of fish caught in three hours is a Poisson distribution. And also the weight of the fish is another random variable. And our goal was to figure out what is the probability that the fisherman is going to catch at least 25 kilograms of fish, something like that. So uh, all these, uh, sorry. Uh, we are going to, uh, as you can see, there are lots of uh, like the finding the averages uh, or other for formulas it's just your the all the also these all these formulas many of them uh like the exponential distribution to get something from the exponential function uh or getting the, the gamma function they are readily available on octave online so uh, you will be using uh, matlab and the code in the book uh, the example code in the book is also provided in matlab code and uh and this is the way we are going to be uh, writing uh, code and this is as you can see this is the solution to the entire assignment just 40 lines of code uh, and i will share this code with you don't worry about whether trying to get the the code from the video i will share the matlab code with you on Octoclass when the time comes okay when we come to this chapter i'm going to share this code with you all right uh, yeah, Octave Online is what we're going to use. Thanks for asking that question again. That's what I forgot to mention, actually. So I think uh, that's a wrap up today. Uh, let me, if you have any other questions, please feel free to send me an email. Uh, that's it from me for today. I will stop the recording. See you all on Thursday.